Today we are finally back with another full PC gaming setup guide and not only do I have some really great budget products here, but I'm also going to be showing you the upgrade paths that I would take with a little bit more baller products as well. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. It feels so good to be back with the next setup guide. Sorry, it's been over a month since my last one, but today's version costs a total of just $500, including the gaming PC. Unlike my previous setup guides though, I wanna include some more expensive alternatives for those of you that aren't on such a strict budget. I'll have links to absolutely everything I talk about down in the description. But before all that though, a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by MMORC.com, a key reseller website that I teamed up with because they're offering the cheap cheapest Windows 10 keys that I've seen so far, as well as a ton of other software keys. MMORC is offering you guys a super exclusive sale on the Windows 10 keys. Click that first link in the description and select add to cart, click place order, paste in the exclusive AF coupon code ZAH35, and then I'll give you a massive 35% discount dropping the price to under $10. After that, select your payment method and complete your order. Once you get the key, click start on your PC and type in activate, press enter, change product key, paste in the key, and there you go activated Windows 10 for less than 10 bucks. Once again, feel free to head down to the links in the description and use that exclusive 35% off coupon code ZAH35. All right, so jumping straight into the setup, let's save that gaming PC for last and start with the monitor as I was super excited to finally get this one in the studio. This here is the Viotech GFV22CB, which is a 22 inch 1080p 144 hertz panel rocking a budget grade to grade response time apparently of five milliseconds. It's free sync and G-Sync compatible has a vase amount if you want to swap out the included one with something better, and it's also sporting those very tiny bezels on the side, which I'm definitely a fan of. It also costs $130 brand new on Amazon, and it's one of the most consistently available budget 144Hz options out there. It was also the most chosen monitor during my last PC peripheral contest that I hosted on my Twitch live stream. If you haven't heard, we are always doing PC building, PC part picker contests, and even PC peripheral contests like I just mentioned over on twitch.tv slash Turf. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and I've been pulling so many ideas for these setup guides and build guides from you guys over there. Going back to the monitor here, just in case you're wondering, because a ton of people always ask me this question, yes, this will work perfectly fine with consoles, and according to Amazon, it comes with a, quote, zero tolerance dead pixel policy, which I didn't personally have to test out myself, but that sounds like it could be pretty useful. Moving on, we get to the mouse, and sorry if you've heard me mention this one before, but this is the new Corsair Qatar Pro Wireless, which is their new lightweight mouse option weighing in at 96 grams. This isn't crazy lightweight like those honeycomb options out there, but you can still easily whip this around your mouse pad. It's rocking a 10,000 DPI Pixar MW3325 optical sensor, and honestly, no other bells and whistles as it just has two buttons on the side. And overall, it's just a stupidly clean and easy budget gaming mouse. It pairs with either the USB dongle or Bluetooth. It's powered by a single AA battery, which can last 135 hours, and then you just swap it out when it's dead. And all of this only costs $40, but I actually just saw this on sale on Amazon for $30 two weeks ago, so be on the lookout for that. Speaking of Amazon deals though, if you don't already know this, we have our own deals god, aka Dr. Zoomer in our ZTD Discord server, which is linked down in the description, and he's constantly giving us the best PC hardware and peripheral deals in the dedicated ZTD deals channel. You can turn on notifications for just his deals, he posts around one to four per day, and he's been saving all of us literally thousands of dollars over there. Next up we have the keyboard, and now this one I was a little bit nervous about, which is why I included a higher end alternative. This is the Razer Sinosa Lite, and I think this is the cheapest keyboard that Razer is currently making, which is why it piqued my interest. It only comes in at $40, which is super low for their brand. It's a full size board with pretty decent plastic build quality. And as you would expect, it has slightly underwhelming RGB performance with not a ton of options using Razer Synapse. Because of the cheap price tag, it's also rocking membrane switches, which most people aren't a huge fan of. The cat 
Now I haven't used a membrane keyboard in over a year and my transition to this one wasn't terrible though. There are some better budget mechanical options out there, but switching over to a membrane keyboard isn't the end of the world like some people would make you think it is. Because of this, I do wanna throw in a higher end alternative for you guys though. Maybe you wanna either buy this later after using a budget keyboard for a few months, or maybe you wanna jump straight into a much better option. And this here is the new Fnatic Streak 65. If you do copy this $500 full setup, this is the first thing that I would recommend you upgrading to in the future. I originally saw Random Frank P's video on this keyboard and I immediately sent an email to my Fnatic rep and told them that I needed this one in the studio right away. This is a 65% keyboard as the name suggests and it's rocking Fnatic's own low profile speed switches which obviously feel much better than the membrane switches on the Razer. I feel so fast when typing and gaming with these switches and I absolutely love them. I've now daily drove two back to back low profile keyboards over the course of the last few months or so and now I can definitely say without a doubt these are what I recommend for both working and gaming. The Streak 65 is also super slim with a compact design, and although it's incredibly lightweight, there's absolutely zero flex to this board, and it feels rock solid. Finally, it's also rocking a detachable USB-C cable up at the top left, so you could swap that out for something nicer, which is apparently what all the cool kids are doing these days. For those of you that are interested in a sound test on this one, here you go. All right, so moving down the setup guide, we get to the headset. And now here, I definitely can't spend a lot of time on. Once again, I decided to pick the Nubwo N7. And today's reason is purely because I ran out of the budget with everything else. And this is all that I could squeeze in there. I think I've used this in two of my recent setup guides, which I apologize for. But if you've been living under a rock, this is easily my favorite super budget option as it only costs $20. And it actually just dropped on sale when writing this video down to $17, which is a steal and a half. It's super comfortable with an incredibly lightweight design and definitely a solid option for you to throw into any budget PC gaming setup. Because I've used this headset so many times already, I wanted to include a higher end option. And this is also the second place that I would recommend upgrading this base $500 setup. And these are the Corsair HS60 Haptic Feedback Edition, which I'm in love with. This is an upgraded version of their already highly rated HS60 wired headset, as this one has this dope Arctic design, but more importantly, haptic feedback in the ear cups. Haptic feedback is all about not just hearing, but feeling the sound when gaming. Think about explosions, gunfire, and whatnot, and although you may instantly start to lean that this is just a gimmick, this is truly a unique gaming experience. When getting shot at or seeing a bomb go off in games like Call of Duty, you can really feel the vibration in your ears, but in a way that enhances the immersion and it's not annoying or anything. There's also a dedicated haptic dial, so you can easily turn that down depending on what you're doing, and these have been my daily driver headphones for my benchmarking setup for several months now. They're super comfortable for longer gaming sessions, and the microphone sounds great as well, which is why I've been using it for recording my gameplay. All right, so rounding out this list of peripherals before we get to the gaming PC is the mouse pad. And to be very honest, like I just mentioned with the headset, I definitely just ran out of money here and I went with the cheapest mouse pad that I actually recommend. This is from Vic Teasing and only costs $6. I've used this so many times already just because it's consistently in stock and has some pretty high quality. Definitely can't go wrong with this option if you're trying to save some money. And then finally, we get to the gaming PC. I have a full dedicated video with all the parts and benchmarks. So please don't waste your time in the comments section of this video asking just basic questions about this build. However, I know that some of you may not be subscribed yet. <clears throat> Maybe you haven't seen that video, so I'll quickly rattle off some of these specs. This PC cost me $300 to make as it's a used build and it's rocking a Ryzen 5 1500X, eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and the GPU is a GTX 1050 Ti, but only because the original GTX 970 that I had in there died on me during testing. This is also inside the Rosewell Spectra D100, which is a beautiful case with four RGB fans, which only cost me $47 new off Newegg. Like I said, I fully benchmarked this PC in the previous video, which will be linked down below, but for some quick benchmarks in Call of Duty Cold War, it got 60 FPS in 1080p low, 243 FPS in CSGO with 1080p in pro settings, Fortnite in 1080p pro settings got 135 FPS, and finally Valorant in 1080p medium settings got 165 FPS. Spending around $300 on just the PC like I did inside a $500 total setup guide definitely squeezes your budget a bit for everything else, but if you find some good deals like I did and get the higher price to performance options like this monitor, this will create a a very nice budget gaming setup. If you're currently trying to part out your own $500 full setup, I'm sure you wanna see even more options than what I showed in this video. So feel free to click the video that's on the screen now and that'll definitely help you out with that. But just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.